What is up? And welcome to another episode of Tiger Pick'ems. My name is Lucas Parrish, and I am your host. And today, I'm joined by David Campbell and Eleanor Sheehan. How are y'all doing? We're good. Thanks for having us on the show. Absolutely. I'm glad to be back. It's been a long time since I've been back. <laughs> it was last time my predictions didn't go so well, so I'm here well, to redeem myself. You know, I, I feel like most weeks my predictions don't go well, but hey, we do the best that we can. Speaking of good to be back, you know what else is good to have back? Mizzou football. It's Absolutely. been a couple weeks since Mizzou has played, but yeah. barring any COVID complications, it's looking good for this week. So we're going to go ahead and get into that and the other great matchups we have to talk about. We're going to start off with LSU at Arkansas, then move to Tennessee at number 23, Auburn, then to Kentucky at number one, Alabama, and finally end it with Mizzou at South Carolina. So sit back, relax, grab a snack, and enjoy the show. LSU Tigers head to Fayette, Arkansas this week to play the Razorbacks. Senior quarterback Felipe Franks is fourth in the SEC in passing yards this year with 1,678 and 16 touchdown passes. Wide receiver Traylon Burks is up in the top 10 among SEC receivers with 34 receptions this year, 508 yards, and five touchdowns. He is a key player in this um, Razorback offense. But also for this game, looking into Saturday's game against the LSU Tigers, running backs Traylon Smith with 441 yards this season and Rameek Boyd with 309 yards and three touchdowns. They are going to be key offensive players for the Razorbacks going into LSU since LSU is not the best on defending the running game. Looking at the defensive side of the Razorbacks, linebacker Grant Morgan has 85 tackles this season, um, following his teammate Bumper Poole has 71 tackles. And so this defense is going to cause LSU some trouble. Switching over to the Tigers, starting quarterback Miles Brennan is injured and out for the season. Um, so they called up freshman quarterback TJ Finley. He will start again after playing one previous game against South Carolina previously in the season. He has 408 yards, two TDs, but three interceptions. He is inexperienced, so hopefully his teammate's wide receiver, Terrence Marshall Jr., who has 540 yards and nine touchdowns this season, will be able to help him out. Um, tight, tight end, Arik Gilbert, and wide receiver, Jare Jenkins, they both have 200-plus receiving yards. Um, that's an inside look into the Tigers' offense. Switching over to the defense, like I said earlier, LSU has had huge defensive struggles this year. Um, they are unable to defend the run game, so that's why I think the Razorbacks are going to cause some trouble um, with their running backs. Safety Jacoby Stevens has 36 total tackles. Um, it's nothing compared to the statistics from the defense on the Razorbacks. Um, that being said, with LSU not having their normal quarterback, them struggling with defense, and um, the Razorbacks did great against the Florida Gators, scoring 35 mm -hmm. points last week against a top team. I think um, Arkansas is going to win this game 31-21 to against LSU. I can't particularly argue with it. The only argument I would have is I don't even think it's going to be that high scoring. Okay. I think yeah. Arkansas takes this one 27-17. to mm -hmm. I, I don't see an avenue. Obviously, Terrence Marshall, like right. you mentioned, is a stud. Mm -hmm. Guy's huge. I mean, watching him here at Mizzou was uh, he, he couldn't be stopped off of, you know, especially after the route when they were just trying to, to make, make something happen right. after, yeah. you know, whenever, whenever the quarterback got some time in the pocket, he just couldn't be stopped. So mm -hmm. he's absolutely going to be helpful. But that LSU defense, my gosh. Not looking good. It's bad. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to actually bump it up. You said low scoring. I'm going opposite end. I think with yeah. scores on both sides of the offense, LSU's played some high scoring games this year. I'm going. But, but Mark and Miles what? Brennan isn't their quarterback. He anymore. is. He isn't. But I, I think TJ Finley has just got to cut out the mistakes. And obviously mistakes are a big problem mm -hmm. with, you know, making it more of a defensive battle. But I, I do think Arkansas with their offensive firepower, I'm a big fan of Felipe Franks. I was. Yeah. He was back at Florida a couple Agreed. years ago. I like him a lot. I think Arkansas is going to win this one 44 to 31. It's interesting because Arkansas has yet to score more than 40 points I know. 
in a game, and you think it's going to happen? I think it's going to happen. Lucas. I mean, it could. Yeah. LSU's LSU's uh, defense is not good. If anyone's going to score over forty points, if there's any team, for Arkansas, it's going to be LSU. LSU. I mean, we right. saw Mizzou do it. Yeah. Connor Bazelak looked like Patrick Mahomes out there. <laughs> yeah, but I think exactly. Felipe Franks is better than Connor Bazelak. Yeah, maybe so. at this point. Maybe at this point in time. <laughs> Hopefully not uh, in the future. <laughs> Hopefully not the future. Maybe right now he's more experienced. Yeah. Well, moving on to Tennessee and Auburn. Auburn is a 23 team in the nation. Tennessee's not ranked. Starting off with Jared Guantamo, the quarterback for the Tennessee Volunteers. It's been a little inconsistent this season. Six touchdowns, three interceptions. About a 127 rating this year, QBR. That's pretty pretty good. But the main focal point of that Tennessee offense is James Palmer, receiver who has over 300 yards. The only receiver in the Tennessee Volunteers that has over 300 yards. Four touchdowns as well. If Auburn wants to win this game, they're going to have to stop him. They're going to have to stop James Palmer from getting open. Let's flip to the defensive side of the football. DeAndre Johnson has four and a half sacks, uh, sacks for the Tennessee Volunteers and two forced fumbles. There's one name I want to mention just because it's the best name in the SEC. Henry To'o To'o only <laughs> has one, what, well, one sack this year, one and a half sack. But that name, that name is just, <laughs> that name could just win the team. He also leads the team in tackles. Let's you, go. It, it's right up there with Ha-Ha Clinton Dix. Right up there with Ha-Ha <laughs> Clinton Dix. Let's go over to Auburn. Two words for this Auburn team. Bo Nix, ladies and gentlemen, a sophomore. He is a stud. I fully, I'm fully confident in Bo Nix uh, rocking the quarterback spot. And also, their running back and their whole running game, Tank Bigsby, added to the Maxwell list, which is college football's best player, has over 500 yards this year. Let's look at their receivers as well. Seth Williams is the main guy. Should be an NFL receiver someday. But don't forget about Anthony Schwartz. I'd like to mention him a little bit. It's more of a speech than Williams. Williams got that big body. Kind of like Terrence Marshall, who we yeah. mentioned earlier. But Anthony Schwartz is a lot more faster. Auburn defense doesn't really have any big names. They have a lot of guys who uh, only have one sack. No one has more than three, however. One linebacker I want to touch on is a Kobe McClain. He has got, I believe he has like two sacks. And not only that. But he leads team in tackles, kind of a do-it-all linebacker for the Auburn Tigers. And in this game, I think it'd also be high scoring. I'm not a lot of defensive firepower on each side. I'm going Auburn this game, 44 to 27. Uh, 44 wow. is the magic number for me yeah. today. I 44. think that Bo Nix, Tank's big, Tank Bigsby, mm -hmm. Seth Williams, Anthony Schwartz, Tennessee can't control that. And also Auburn, they've been doing everything right lately. Tennessee been doing everything wrong lately. Got two teams going very different directions, and the Auburn takes this one. Yeah, Tennessee is definitely looking rough. They started off the season looking really good. They were ranked for a bit, and then they really fell off. You know, you, you mentioned Jared Guarantano. He's the passer rating of 127. In the NFL, that would be historic. In college, that's really more middle of the road. That's mm -hmm. not, I mean, you can get up 140, 150 for mm -hmm. uh, 160 for, for some of the better quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. So 127 is not particularly high in my mind, and it shouldn't be. He has not been he playing been well. all that well. Tennessee, you're right, on the on the decline. Opposite of last season, where towards the end of the season they were on the rise. Absolutely. Right now they're on the decline. Auburn, I don't know if I say they're on the rise, but winning last week is an improvement to what they had been doing. I'll yeah. give you that. Bo Nix, again, you say he's a stud. I'm not convinced yet. I am. I, I'm I well, what what about it convinces you? Because I saw some. I like I've seen some very bad plays. From so Bo Nix the thing with Bo Nix that what I like, he's got the talent. I don't, I don't, I don't think he can Absolutely. debate. He's he has got the talent, talent. The, mm -hmm. the arm talent, and with the legs as well. He's the team's second leading rusher behind Tank Bigsby. The problem with Bo Nix is that he just, I feel like he feels the pressure of the Auburn yeah. offense on him way too much, and he has yet to embrace that. And when he does, I think next year he's a Heisman candidate. Maybe. And I, I agree. fully, fully believe that. Uh, once he just takes that pressure off, realizes, hey, I can get tank big, tank big the ball more. I can just be a little more relieved, more comfortable in the pocket. Uh, but I think the talent, no matter what, is there. It's just a little raw at this point in time. Uh, just needs to be controlled, and that's that's why I like about Bo Nix. Yeah, my concern is just that I haven't seen Bo Nix take the steps that I want them to see. Mm -hmm. Want him to see, you know. And, and you you again have a high scoring game. I again have a low scoring game. Not necessarily because I think these defenses are great. Mm -hmm. I just don't trust these offenses. I've got a twenty one to fourteen. Okay. I think it's gonna be pretty low scoring, if I'm gonna be honest. I do think Auburn is gonna pull this one out. I guess mm -hmm. I should say a winner. <laughs> I think Auburn's gonna pull it out twenty one fourteen, but it's not gonna it's be been, pretty the, the SEC this year has been and all of college football has been very offensive. You know, yeah, there's been a has. lot of offense and just continue that trend. I, I just I don't see a way that, that either team puts up more than I think one team will put up more than thirty. Right. I fully guarantee that. Yeah. Uh, I, that's that's my guarantee. Auburn is going to score more than 30 points against Tennessee. Uh, that, that's, I got Auburn in the victory. I have to agree with you with the Bo Nix. I, I think he's a stud. And with Tanks Bigsby in the backfield and the receivers that he has available to them, 
Um, I think their opponent is going to be very high scoring around maybe like 27 points. Um, but with Tennessee and their games previously in the season, I think they're going to score 17. So I think Auburn's going to um, win by 10. Okay. All right. I yeah. like it. Moving now to Kentucky, starting off with their quarterback, Terry Wilson. Terry Wilson hasn't been bad. 65% completion, 712 yards, six touchdowns, one interception. That's not particularly good either. Definitely not going to get it done against Alabama. No. Moving, their running back, Chris Rodriguez Jr., on the other hand, has been fantastic. 88 attempts, 592 yards. Over six yards per carry, six touchdowns, and their defense. Their defense is really what makes this Kentucky team good. 21.3 points allowed per game, 362.7 yards allowed per game. Both excellent marks, especially in an SEC. In an SEC that does not have a dominant defense this season. Their key to the game, stop Alabama's offense. I mean, yeah. Mac Jones has just been insane. Moving now to Alabama, Mac Jones. 78.5% completion, 21.96 yards. 16 touchdowns to two interceptions. He's, he's in the Heisman conversation. He's in the first round draft conversation. Mac Jones has been insane this year. But he may still be second on that offense to Najee Harris, who has yeah. 14 rushing touchdowns. Again, a huge number. That's two rushing touchdowns per game. 5.8 yards per carry to go along with that. Wide receiver Devonta Smith, obviously wide receiver Waddle, Jalen Waddle, is out for the season. He'll be a high pick in the draft. Devonta Smith, on the other hand, another high pick in the draft. 56 receptions, 759 yards, and eight touchdowns. He's been good, and their defense has really stepped it up. They started off the season not looking great. Recently, they have, in fact, gotten a lot better. The key to the game, just play good offense. Don't let Kentucky's strength is their defense. You mm -hmm. have to, you know, obviously play to your strength. Play to your opponent's weakness and try and make your opponent's strength a weakness. Mm -hmm. Playing good offense will do that. I, I mean, I think this is going to go Alabama. I, I don't even think it's going to be particularly close. I've got this one. You, you had 44 as your lucky number. We're going 44 to 27. All right. Yeah, I got a, a little more than that. Um, Kentucky's not a good team. I don't know. I don't think Terry Wilson's a good quarterback either. He had, I think the Kentucky uh, offense against Mizzou had like 39 passing yards. Yeah. Like something very yeah. small like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And 13 of those was the backup quarterback I made for a play. Uh <laughs> I think this Kentucky offense is needs a lot of work. I like Rodriguez, don't get me wrong. I think that he is a solid back, but I think Alabama's going to win this game 52-0. to zero. That is my hot wow. take. If, I, if we're doing hot takes, I don't know if we decided to do hot takes or not. Bama is going to shut out Kentucky 52-0. to zero. You heard it here first. <laughs> I'm just when it happens, just feel free to. Maybe David Campbell was right. So I have All to right. go in the middle between you guys. Um, I do believe that <laughs> Alabama, for no doubt, is going to slaughter them. I'm going to go 35 to 10. So nothing as quite big as David, um, but I do think that's going to be a big mm. scoring gap between these yeah, two teams. Absolutely, Alabama. Yeah. I think is. I mean, they're the number one team in the yeah, in the no, no doubt. In the don't, don't be wrong. Reason. Losing Waddle hurts. Absolutely, but, but they don't. They don't need they him. Don't, they, don't no. need they don't need him. They don't need him. They still have Devonta Smith mm -hmm. as a. I mean, a, a very good college wide receiver one. And behind that, yeah. they've got plenty of talent. To they could just run the ball every time. They have an amazing old line. They Najee have, Harris. They have Alex yeah. Leatherwood as their main yeah. tackle. Mm -hmm. From behind him, every play, they're yeah. going to get six a play. I mean, seriously, Alabama's going to win this game. Yeah. Easily. Moving now to the Mizzou game. South Carolina at Mizzou. And just like always, we haven't done it the past couple weeks because there hasn't been a Mizzou game. But we're getting back on track. We've got a package of South Carolina for you guys to enjoy from staffer Mark Pullen, Jr. Enjoy. The Mizzou Tigers had the Columbia East this week in the face-off with the South Carolina Gamecocks. This will be the Gamecocks' first game without coach Will Muschamp, who was fired this past Sunday. Offensive coordinator and QB's coach Mike Bodo will step in as an interim coach for South Carolina. They'll also be without their two lockdown defenders in J.C. Horn and Israel McQuamu, both of whom have opted out the rest of the season to prepare for the NFL draft. So even with these significant losses, the Gamecocks still have some playmakers on both sides of the ball. The offense is led by quarterback Colin Hill, who is 7th in the SEC in passing yards with just over 1,400 yards, and he's also thrown 6 touchdowns on the year. Then on the outside, there's always dangerous receiver Shai Smith. Smith is 7th in SEC in receptions with 53, as well as yards with 596, and also has 4 touchdowns on the year. Then in the backfield, there's running back Kevin Harris. Harris right now is 1st in the SEC and ranks 8th in all of college football in rushing yards with 817 yards. He's also second in the SEC and third in all of college football in rushing touchdowns with 13. Now, defensively, the Gamecocks like to get to the quarterback and force turnovers. They are led by linebacker Ernest Jones, who ranks second in the SEC in total tackles with 78. He's also added in a sack, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery on the season. 
So while SC will be without their two top DBs, they still have safety Jamie Robinson running over the middle. Robinson is ninth in SEC right now in tackles with 55, and he's fourth in SEC in pass breakups. While South Carolina is only 2-5 on the season, they played each game tough this year. So Saturday looks to be a hard-fought SEC matchup and should turn out to be a great game. For MTV's 23 Sports, this has been Mark Poland. Mizzou is finally playing again. Hopefully, hopefully, we in, in COVID we can never be completely sure. Quarterback Connor Bazelak came in first game, looked great, four touchdowns, no interceptions. Since then, I guess he's only played one other game, not looked as great. 69% completion, nice. 1100. Thank you, thank you, David. 1101 yards, four to one touchdown to interception. Running back Larry Roundtree and Tyler Beatty, thunder and lightning. They've been good. Larry Roundtree leading currently in rushing yards. Wide receivers Jalen Knox and Damon Hazleton Jr. lead the team in receiving. Hazleton Jr. has been a little bit disappointing. If I'm going to be honest, Jalen Knox currently leads the team with just over 200 yards. So nothing too terribly fantastic. And the defense has been hit or miss. Right. The key to the game for Mizzou is absolutely stopped running back Kevin Harris. Colin Hill is probably not going to be much of a threat. <sighs> Kevin Harris, on the other hand, has been great. Yeah, agreed. If, if, if Mizzou can stop the running game, for South Carolina, I think they have a good chance to take it, and I think they do take it, especially with South Carolina missing their two pro cornerbacks as they both declare for the draft amid South Carolina firing their head coach. I think Mizzou takes this one 35-17. to 17. Great. I'm so excited that the Columbia versus Columbia matchup <laughs> is back. Yep. Um, I have to agree with you. Um, I'm going for the Mizzou Tigers. I think they're going to win 27 um, to 10. I'm really excited. I think this is going to be a big game for uh, Larry Roundtree, and I'm excited to have uh, Mizzou back on Saturday. I think that Mizzou is going to win. Yeah. 17 to 16. Wow. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a very close game. Wow. Scoring. I, mean, I know we're kind of going back and forth I know. here. Yeah, right? this yeah. one I don't think is going to be <laughs> close. Not yeah. without their two cornerbacks. I, I know. Think Ronald Baselak is going to rip this defense to shreds like he did with LSU. I think there's definitely a possibility of that happening, and it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if that does yeah. happen. Uh, mm-hmm. The problem with Eli Drinkwitz that I saw last week with Florida as a coach, he refused to open up the playbook to more yeah. shot plays like he did against Mizzou. Oh, sorry, LSU. He did those things. And I mean, he was probably maybe just scared about playing Florida. He shouldn't be scared about playing South Carolina anymore because <laughs> there's no one on that team yep. that can stop our weapons. So I think at the end of the day, he's just going to hand the ball off to Larry Roundtree a lot, go on a lot of take some punts and like fourth and twos, mm-hmm. fourth and threes, and yeah. instead of trying to go for it. And I think it's going to be 17 16 yeah. Mizzou. Uh, one, one player I want to mention from South Carolina, Shai Smith, receiver. Yep. I like him yep. a lot. I've been a big fan of his. He's been quite uh, good this all season. season. So, really, uh, I think he has half of whatever calling out yeah. the passing yards are. Just one, about one like it's, it's to him. Yeah, so I got Mizzou win this one 17 16 because yep. I think it's going to be a very calm game. Yep. Much like the Kentucky I one mean, in, in Mizzou. We're biased here on this show, but yeah. I do. We, we do think Mizzou's going to take it. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. Special thanks to my guest today. I always love having y'all yeah, on. For yeah. David Woo-hoo. Campbell and Eleanor Sheehan, I'm Lucas Parrish. Have a great day.